karibu yetu kwa wakati huo if he, if he can find her the nearest pastor kama huyo mtu anaweza mtafutia pastor mweko wa karibu and so that was a friday the next day the pastor came was on a saturday na hiyo ilikuwa siku ya tano na huyo pastor akakuja kwetu siku ya ya uh, samedi and so my mom took time to recall everything that she had you know the encounter she had with god the night before mama ngo akachukua hiyo wakati wa ya kuambia huyo pastor hiyo yote ambayo amepokea kwenye ndoto and before the pastor was about to pray for her na mbele huyo pastor amuombee mama She said something that I will never forget. Alisema maneno ambayo mimi sitasahau. That from today, kama kutokea leo, I want to become a follower of God. Nataka nikuwe mfuasi wa Yesu wa Mungu. And I no longer want to go back to the old me. Na sitaki tena nirudi kuwa kama mimi wa zamani. And before the pastor prayed for her. Na mbele huyo pastor muombee. The pastor gave me and my siblings an opportunity as well. Hiyo pastor ametupatia mimi na na ndugu zangu nasi hiyo neema. If we wanted to take the, the, the same step that my mom was about. Kama tunataka kuchukua hiyo hatua kama mama amechukua. And I can vividly remember that I was the first one to say yes. Na nakumbuka kama mimi ndio nilikuwa wa kwanza kuitika. And then my older brother was next. Kisha kakaangu mkuu akafuatia. But not all my siblings accepted that. Some Lakini sio wa ndugu zangu wote ndio wamekubali hii. And so after me and my brother said yes the pastor prayed for us. So wakati mimi na kakaangu tumesema ndio pastor ametuombea na kutubariki. And so we started attending the nearest church the Salvation Army. Na kisha tukaanza kwenda ku kanisa ya Salvation Army. But my testimony is not about my mom. Lakini shuhuda yangu sio kuhusu mama yangu. You might be wondering how did I find God? Wewe unaweza kujiuliza jinsi gani mimi nimempata Mungu? How did I get from where I was to where I am now? Jinsi gani mimi nimetoka mahali nilipokuwa na kufika hapa? And quite frankly I didn't have a special encounter like my mom did. Na mimi sikukuwa na mkutano kama mama yangu alikuwa nayo. If anything I struggled. Na kama ni kitu yote mimi nimeteseka sana. To find God. Nimeteseka mnja yangu ya kufuata Mungu ya kumpata. Because if anything I, I was bombarded with a culture clash. I'm not culture clash but like a religious way you just coming from muslim and you have to completely change. Na kwenye njia fulani nilikuwa niki 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 banwa na kitu kutoka kwenye waislamu na kushanje kila kitu na kwenda kukristo. And so I found God over the many years of struggling to be a Christian. Na nimemfuata nimempata Mungu kupitia miaka mingi ambayo nilikuwa nikigombana kukuwa mkristo. Long story short, na kukata hadi mrefu kufupi. I made some silly decisions. Nimechukua maamuzi maamuzi mabaya kwa maisha yangu. And these led me away from God and towards na, many emotional breakdowns. Na hii imenituma mbali na Mungu na nikakuwa nikivunjika kiroho sana. I got lost in the ways of the world. Nimepotea kwa njia za kidunia. And my life was full of strife and complete misery. Na maisha yangu ilikuwa ilikuwa maovu sana. I didn't know what else to do but I kept crying to God. I kept Sikujua nini ya kufanya lakini niliendelea na kumlilia Mungu. And every single time I was just like God why is this thing happening to me? Na kila mara nilikuwa nauliza Mungu kwa nini haya yananitokea mie. And as I grew distance from God. Na gisi niliendelea kwenda mbali na Mungu. My life started to fall apart. Maisha yangu kaanza ku kuharibika. And like I said I Again, always fell on my knees. Na kila mara nilikuwa nikirudia kwenye magoti. Sorry. And every single time I did that, na kila mara nilikuwa nikifanya haya. I felt a sense of pull that like God was pulling me towards. Nilikuwa nasikia kama Mungu yuko ananivulula nimsogelee tena. Like he was almost calling me towards. Lakini ilikuwa kama iko ananiita kusogelea kitu fulani. But I kept rejecting. Lakini nilikuwa nikikana. I kept saying God I'm even struggling to be a Christian. Nilikuwa nasema Mungu kwanza mimi nina shida ya kukuwa Mkristo Mr. Wesley. I don't, I don't yani. even know. Mimi sijui hata gisi. So I, I, I kept on ignoring him. Na niliendelea na kukataa na kukataa. I kept on ignoring him. Na kuendelea kwenda mbali. But over the past year and a half. Lakini kwa mwaka mmoja na nusu ambayo imepita. God has been teaching me. Mungu alikuwa akinifunza to trust him. Kumwaminia yeye. And he's deposited Jeremiah 29 verse 11 on my heart. Na ametia hiyo Jeremiah sura 12 na 9. 
And this verse kept popping up a lot and I was like why? Na hivyo sasa naendelea na kunirudiliana niko najiuliza kwa nini? I honestly couldn't understand. Lakini sikukua na uwezo wa kuelewa. It took me so long to figure out. Imenichukua muda mrefu kuyaelewa. That the ways I was living was not in line with what God. Kama njia ambazo nilikuwa nikiisha sikukua napatana na mapenzi ya Mungu. And because of this, na kwa ajili ya haya, I fell back on my knees again. Nilirudi tena kwenye magoti. But at this time I felt rejected. Na lakini hii tu nilisikia kama nimetupwa, nimekanwa. I felt unwanted. Nilisikia kama sipendi. I felt like I lost the people that I thought were my friends. Na nilisikia kama ninapoteza wale watu ambao nilizani ni marafiki zangu. I felt isolated from everyone. Na nilisikia kama nimetoa, nimetolewa kwa watu wengine. And I'm not going to lie I, I tried to commit suicide few Na times. Nasita wadanganya lakini nilitaka kujua mara mara nyingi. And I didn't tell anyone about it. Lakini sikuambia mtu. Because I felt like I was just losing everything. I was just scared. Kwa sababu nilisikia kama nime nimepoteza kila kitu nimetupwa. But God kept reminding me again Jeremiah. Lakini Mungu alikuwa akiendelea na kunikumbusha hii kitabu kia Yeremia. Again and again. Kila mara na kila mara. And I said God you have a good you said you have a good plan. Na nikasema Mungu unasema una mipango mizuri kwangu. It doesn't it doesn't look all that good. Lakini hii mipango zako haionekani kama ni I, I, I'm not feeling like that plan. Na mimi nilikuwa najisikia sijisikie kama hiyo mipango. And so earlier this year, lakini mwanzo wa mwaka, I was willing to let go and completely and I mean completely die to the version of me. Nilikuwa nikiachilia na kabisa kukufa utu wangu ambao ulikuwa kukufa. That I had been in the past. Ile ambao ule mtu ambao nilikuwa zamani. And so I decided to fully turn away from my old ways and I took God more seriously. Na nikaamua kuacha hiyo njia zangu na kumchukua Mungu kwa serious yake yote. And I found so I found so much meaning in life. Na kisha nikapata tena maana ya maisha. God reminded me that when you were going through those times. Mungu akanikumbusha kama wakati ulikuwa ukipitia hayo mapito. When you were going through these seasons. Wakati ulikuwa ukipitia hiyo mapito. You didn't know where. Haukujua. But I was shaped. Lakini mimi nilikuwa nikikupanga. Nilikuwa nakuchora. Nilikuwa nikikubadilisha. For the Jeremiah 29:11. Ambayo inasema nikuwa nikikupanga. Na nilikuwa kuelewa na kusema apa sasa nimeelewa. Now I know why he kept saying Jeremiah 29:11. I started saying God. Nikasema Mungu. Wow. I'm like I was like it all makes sense now. Nilikuwa kama inaeleweka sasa. I know that God's plans are what's best for me. Najua kama mipango ya Mungu ndio ya mzuri sana kwangu. Especially with my future and since letting go of my past. Sana sana ni kwa ajili ya mafitira yangu kuachilia passé. Since then I found peace. Na hapa tokea hapo nimepata amani. And I found this peace that it, it almost doesn't make sense even when I'm going through. amani ambayo haieleweki hata wakati napitia vitu. Even when now I'm going through things I'm hata wakati napitia mambo sasa niko na hii amani ndani yangu. That I know it's not it can only be from God. Na amani ambayo najua kama inatoka tu kwangu. Because I didn't have that before. Kwa sababu sikukua na yale mbele. I now live in freedom knowing that whatever God wants me to do. Na hivi naishi kwa na uhuru wa kujua kama yoyote ile ambayo Mungu anataka nifanye. By his grace I will do it. Na kwa neema yake naifanya. And so in April earlier this year. Na kwa mwezi wa 4 huu mwaka I made the decision. Nimechukua maamuzi. Not even I made the decision. It's almost God was telling me. Iko aiko kama nimechukua maamuzi lakini kama Mungu alikuwa akiniambia. I need to get baptized. Unahitaji kubatizwa. 
And so I was baptized Sika as the next batizua. step in my journey of faith in April. And I was blessed with the name Abigail. Na na jina kuita Abigail. And so for those that knew me yesterday as Adija. Kama wale jana kama Adija hello, I'm Abigail. Na leo jina langu ni Abigail. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm not perfect or anything like that. But I almost feel like the name Abigail suits me somehow. I'm so grateful that God has brought me so much closer to him the more I seek him. I can now see him working in my life in so many ways. Amen. And I'm beyond excited to outwardly and publicly declare the love that I have for him. Amen. And so before I start my words, if we can just bow our head, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as I prepare to proclaim your word, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to be in your presence and amongst your people, Jesus. Open their eyes and ears so that they may, they may find you today, Lord, like I did. We acknowledge that your word our, is our lamp to the feet and, our, and the light to our path. So, Lord, open our hearts and minds to receive the message and help us to understand what you want to reveal to us today. I pray for those who are here, those that are watching online, that you would soften their hearts and prepare them to receive your word, Lord. I pray that you will remove any distraction or obstacles that may be around us, Father, and allow us to fully be immersed in your word. I intercede for those that are struggling with doubt or fear. Today, Father God, I pray that they will have an encounter with you, that they, that they will be reassured that you are their father. As the youth of PFPC, we do not take this opportunity to lead the Sunday service for granted. And Lord, if anything, we are honored. We are blessed, Father God. And so I ask for your fresh anointing as I proclaim your word. Father God, I ask that you use me as a vessel. As I'm about to say the word, I pray that I'm standing here physically. But I pray, Holy Spirit, that you speak through me. May it not be my words, but may it be you speaking through me. And I pray that whoever is under the sound of my voice, Father God, will be blessed by today's word. I pray and ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 And I'm sorry for taking your time, but let's get into today's word. Amen. Today's topic or like, the message neno ya leo. is God does not qualify. God does not call the qualified. Mungu wale kamilika, but he qualifies the calls. Wale God isn't looking for those people that they feel like they, they have it all. Na Mungu wale kama wana kila kitu. But he's looking for those people that, are, that, that feel ill-equipped. Ill wale kama hawawezi. And unqualified to Na do this. Wale kufanya kazi ya Mungu. And so... When I was meditating on this word that God laid on my heart, I looked into the word call because it's saying that God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. And in scripture, the word call is used. It refers to us belonging to Christ. When we belong to Christ, it's almost like we are fully devoted and entrenched and in, in shining his light in, into this world. Romans 8:28 tells us that it says that all things work together for good for those who love God. Who are called according to his purpose. And so if I can just tack out a question to everyone. And think about it, it's a rhetorical question. What is God's calling on your life? What is God specifically calling you to do Mungu into this world? 
Because from our understanding, God tells us in his word, he created us. He designed us to do what he wants us to do. In the Bible, God makes it very clear that we are to love others. He's calling us to love Na others. He has called us to love the poor. And he has called us to live in such a way that others can see him through us. And so whatever it is that you do in life, whether it's the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you are around your family, God is calling us to live our lives is almost like Maisha yetu. when this person next to you sees Kama you they can see Christ ana, inside ana, you ana, ana yako. and so that's the biggest call God, God is calling us to Na, yale mambo Mungu amen when we consider what God is calling for us in this life Na, tuki, uh, when we consider like Sat, what God is calling us to do kwenye maisha hii. We must humble ourselves. But because it, it's one thing to be called. But it's another thing if you're prideful and you bring your ego. Amen. Amen. So God is asking us when he when he calls us he's asking us to humble ourselves. And to follow his direction. And so whatever it is God is calling you to do. God is here to tell me to remind you that Mungu iko hapa kuniambia nikukumbushe kama You need to be available. Unahitaji kuwa kuwa free. He is calling kwa tayari kwa sababu anakuita. It doesn't matter who you are. Haijalishi wewe ni nani. Haijalishi kazi gani unafanya. Haijalishi kama unajisikia wewe hauwezi. If he has called you. Kama yeye amekuita. As the, as, as the subject of today says if he has called you he Na, will surely equip you. Na kama neno inasema ame, kama amekuita atakupatia yale unayohitaji. Na najisikia kama niko nazungumza na kwa kupekee yako lakini nakwambia kama Mungu anakuita ana nguvu ya kukuita. Kama unajisikia hauwezi Mungu ana uwezo ya kukufanya uwezi. Kwa sababu Mungu anaweza kuita ufanye kitu kabambi sana. That surpasses your understanding. Ambao itatambuka kuelewa kwako. But he's telling us to, to, to know that lakini anatuhitaji tujue kama atatupatia so if we have our bible let's open kama tuna biblia zetu tutafungua biblia and if we can get our reader to read for us first na, corinthians na tutaomba wasomi wa wetu watusome uh, wa korinto wa kwanza chapter 1 from 26 to 31 kwanza um style wa makumi mbili na sita mpaka makumi tatu and if someone just can signal me if i'm going over time because i'm really good with going over time so someone can just wave to me <laughs> or something like that let's read so we're reading first corinthians chapter 1 26 to 31 for consider your your calling brothers not many of you were wise according to worldly standards but not many were powerful not not many were of noble birth but god chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Amen. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen. Tunasoma kwa Swahili inasema Maana ndugu zangu angalieni mwito wenu ya kwamba si wengi wenye hekima ya mwilini si wengi wenye nguvu si wengi wenye cheo walioitwa bali Mungu aliwachagua ali aliachagua mambo mapumbavu ya dunia awaaibishe wenye hekima tena Mungu alivichagua vitu dhaifu vya dunia ili aviaibishe vyenye nguvu tena Mungu alivichagua vitu vinyonge vya dunia na vilivyodharauliwa naam vitu ambavyo haviko ili avibatilishe vile vilivyoko mwenye mwili awe 
Mwenye mwili awaye yote asije akajisifu mbele za Mungu bali kwa yeye ninyi mmepata kuwa katika Kristo aliyefanywa kwetu hekima itakayo itokayo kwa Mungu na haki na utakatifu na ukombozi kusudi kama alivyoandikwa kama ilivyoandikwa yeye aonae fahari na aone fahari juu ya Bwana amen amen haleluya amen i love this corinthians na napenda hii um, sura ya wa korinto because it's almost god is calling us fools in a sense and i'm sorry to say kama mungu ana tuita wapumbavu kwa njia fulani in a sense like it's almost god prefers fools to use as tools because when you look and kama mungu anataka kutumia wapumbavu kutumia kama vyombo vyake his glory is then glorified kwa sababu kwa kupitia hiyo njia utukufu wake unaonekana god uses the weak to shame the strong mungu anatumia wale wazaifu kupatisha haya wale ambao wanajita wenye nguvu god uses those that the worldly sees them as ill equipped and nothing and not good wale ambao dunia inaona kama hawastahili and and through them his glory na kuwapitia wale utukufu wake unaonekana amen amen god has called us because he loves us amen mungu ametuita kwa sababu ametupenda amen he has called the unqualified so that he can qualify us ametuita sisi ambao hatustahili ili apate kutupatia ustahili paul explains us that paulo anatuelezea kama being weak here Who? kuwa mzaifu in this sense it's almost like we are coming to him humbling ourselves ni kama gisi tunakuja mbele za Mungu na kujishusha you coming to god and saying god i don't know what i am doing unakuja mbele ya Mungu akisema Mungu sijui yale ambayo nafanya i don't think i'm the person for the job sizani kama mimi ndio mtu ambao unahitaji kwa kazi hii i'm not as, as wise as this other person mimi siko siko mtu mwenye hekima kama mtu mwingine and if someone falls under the category of first corinthians na kama mtu amejisha kwenye hiyo category ya wa korinto wa kwanza you're the best person for god to use wewe ndio mtu mzuri sana kwa Mungu kutumia because when you come to him as we kwa sababu ukikuja kwake kama mzai not knowing bila kujua not understanding bila kuelewa but you humble yourself lakini unajishusha mbele ya Mungu and you obey the call and you ask him to use you unamwambia akutumikishe because he says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world yeye ni mkuu aliye ndani yetu kushinda yule aliye ndani ya yote so we may look foolish to the world na tutezi onekana kama wapumbavu kwa dunia foolish and weak to the world but God wants to use that to glorify to for his glory to come through that ile utukufu wake ile utukufu wake ile utukufu wake ionekane amen amen consider moses in the bible angalia musa kwenye biblia who had a speech problem yule ambaye hakukua hata anajua kuzungumza and if you're familiar with the, with the story you know that na kama unajua habari za Musa unajua kama he was he deemed himself as unqualified in so many ways yeye alikuwa akijisema hastahili kwa njia nyingi sana in the bible it says that he was stuttering like he had a speech impediment na biblia inasema kama alikuwa na kigugumizi but because he came to god and said here i am lakini kwa sababu alikaa mbele za mungu na kusema mimi huyu he humbled himself amejishusha he answered the call ameikubali hiyo wito god equip him mungu akampatia njia za kutumia and so the lord is telling me to tell you the same way he used moses jinsi alitumia If you come to him and you say God here I am. If you humble yourself. If you submit to God. If you allow him to use you as a vessel. The same way he used Moses. Vile vile alitumikisha Musa. Now I don't know who I'm speaking to because we are all sleeping. The Bible is telling us God is reminding us that we may feel inequip. Kama tutazijisikia kama hatustahili. But he's telling us the same way he used Moses. Vile vile alitumikisha Musa. The same way Moses felt ill equipped. The same way Moses felt unqualified. The same way Moses felt like he wasn't the right person for the job. The same way Moses felt like God I don't even know what to tell him. I am stuttering. I don't even know words to say. But God said, lakini Mungu alimwambia Am I not the one that created? Je, haiko mimi ndio nimekuumba.
I don't know who I'm speaking to. But God has been calling you for a long time. God has been calling you into ministry. God has been calling you to, to, to be in the choir. God has been calling you into ushering. But because you feel ill-equipped, you feel God has been calling you into ministry. But because you feel unqualified, because you feel like your pastor is holding you, you have not responded to the call. You have ignored the call. You have belittled yourself and you have decided to stay in your comfort zone. But, but today God is telling me to remind you that when you humble yourself the same way Moses humbled himself and, and, choose to, and take the step to take the step out of your comfort zone and trust and believe in him he is going to equip you. He's going to qualify you. He's going to put you in places where you deserve to be. Not because of who you think you are. Because of who he created you to be. People around you may see that you are nothing. People around you may not see the call that God has on your life. But it's only God that sees their hearts. Amen. Let's look at Peter as well. He denied God three times. But God did mighty things with him. Rahab as well was a prostitute. Rahab. Rahab But she was also used mighty. Um, Thomas as well was a doubter. And these were people who back in the days were deemed unqualified. But the word teaches us and shows us how God equipped them. Even though by the worldly standard they were, they were deemed unqualified. Amen. Amen. So God makes us and God will equip us. So whatever God is calling you into he wants me to remind you that he will equip you. God makes what was useless to be useful. What was fruitless to be fruitful. What was painful to be gainful. Amen. In fact, making the impossibles possible. That's one, one of God's special specialty. And I'm standing here as a testimony to testify and to declare that. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Acts. Biblia nasema kwenye kitabu kwa matendo ya mitume. First eight, if we can get someone to read. Matendo ya mitume sura kwanza mstari wa mnane. Acts chapter one verse eight. Yeah. We read in the name of the Lord. Amen. But you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth, Amen. 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 Lakini mtapokea nguvu, akiisha kuajilia juu yenu rom takatifu. Nani mtakuwa mashahidi wangu katika Jerusalem, na katika uyahudi wote na Samaria, na hata mwisho wanchi. Amen. Amen. For those that are here today, now kwa wale ambao wako hapa siku ya leo, that have been called, wale ambao wameitwa, which I believe we are all called, na naamini kama sote tumeitwa, tune into your calling. Kimbilia sasa wito wako. Amen. Amen. Because when the Bible was saying in Acts, kwa sababu yale ambayo Biblia nasema kwenye kitabu kwa matendo ya mitume, when the Holy Spirit comes, wakati Rom takatifu atakuja, you receive the power. Uta uta pata nguvu. You may feel 
unqualified. You may feel ill-equipped. You may feel like you're not the person for the job. Maybe they might ask you to lead the worship team. Maybe they might ask you to be the leader of, of the mothers, for example. If you only humble yourself and you obey the call, and trust and believe in God, ask him to activate that that which is inside of you and the Holy Spirit will give you he will equip you and he will make sure he qualifies you for the task because there is nothing that is impossible with God God has already blessed you God has already equipped you more than you even think. he has sent you into this world for a purpose God has sent you into this world for a mission and he wants you to humble yourself and tune in in that call. Amen. If we can just get our reader as well to read in Exodus. Exodus 4 from 10 to 16. Exodus 4 from 10 to 16. We read in the name of the Lord. Amen. Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have I not the Lord? Now neither go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was, ki was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron and, Le and sorry, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be, you will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people. And he himself, and be, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you. And you shall be to him as God. Amen. Amen. Nasoma kitabu cha kutoka sura yake ya nne mstari wa kumi mpaka kumi na sita. Musa akamwambia Bwana, "E Bwana, mimi si msemaji tokea zamani, wala tokea hapo uliposema na mtumishi wako, maana mimi si mwepesi wa kusema na ulimi wangu ni mzito." Bwana akamwambia, "Ni nani aliyekifanya kinywa cha mwanadamu au ni nani afanyaye mtu kuwa bubu au kiziwi au mwenye kuona au kuwa kipofu? Si mimi, Bwana." Basi sasa enenda nami nitakuwa pamoja na kinywa chako na kukufundisha utakalo linena. Akasema, "E hey, Bwana na kuomba, tuma kwa mkono wako huo huyo atakaye mtuma." Asira ya Bwana ikawaka juu ya Musa, akasema, "Je, hayuko Haruni ndugu yako Mlawi na jua ya kuwa yeye aweza kukusema vizuri? Pamoja na hayo, tazama anakuja kukulaki." Naye atakapokuona atafurahi moyoni mwake. Nawe utasema naye na kuyatia maneno kinywani mwake. Nami nitakuwa pamoja na kinywa chako na pamoja na kinywa chake na kuwafundisheni mtakayoyafanya. Naye atakuwa msemaji wako kwa watu hata yeye atakuwa mfano wa kinywa chako. Nawe utakuwa mfano wa Mungu kwake. Amen. Amen. Amen kanisa. Hallelujah, Kanisa. We're all quiet. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As we read the story of Moses, for those that are familiar, now, and if you're not familiar, go and read it at home because it's a great story. Moses basically is an example of how God can use anyone. Musa ni, ni uh, example ya gisi mungu anaweza kutumia kila mtu. No matter how weak or insignificant you are. kama unajisikia hausaili wala uko mzaifu. God called him. Mungu amemuita. He said here I am God. Na amesema ndio niko hapa mungu. But when God told him 
the task that he had to Lakini do. wakati Mungu alimpatia hiyo uh, uh, kazi ya kufanya He said like, God I have a startling problem. Musa akamwambia Mungu sina uwezo wa kuongea. He had all this question like who am I to Alikuwa na maswali akisema mimi ni nani kufanya kazi hii? Why can't you pick someone? Kwa sababu gani haukuchagua mtu mwingine? I'm so unqualified to do mimi that. Mimi sistahili kufanya hiyo kazi. I'm so ill equipped to do mimi it. Mimi sina uwezo wa kufanya hiyo kazi. Go and pick someone else. Wende uchague mwingine. But the Lord still insisted on Moses. Lakini Mungu alibaki kwenye kwa Musa. The Lord still insisted on Moses. Akakazia Musa. And he did he, he not only insisted on na hakukazia tu kwa Musa but he assured that he was equipped lakini akamwambia una uwezo for what god was calling him to do kwa kufanya yale Mungu amemuita afanye and so we are all called na sote tumeitwa and we are asked to respond na tumeitwa kujibu we are asked to be available to humble Tume, ourselves tumeitwa kujishusha mbele za Mungu na kuamini Mungu that the same way he kama vile equip Moses hiyo hiyo njia ametumia kwa sababu going to equip us Musa, the same tumikisha. way he equip Moses yesi amempatia Musa kusaidia he is going to equip you nawe atakupa amen amen tell the person next to you Amiga that i am called for a purpose kama mimi nimeitwa kwa shabaha Tell the person next to you that I am a call for a purpose. Tell the person next to you that Moses is going to equip. I mean God is going to equip you. The same way he equipped Moses. Vile vile gisi ametumia Musa. And so I don't know who I'm talking to. Na sijui nani ambaye anazungumza naye. But the Lord has been calling you. Lakini Mungu alikuwa akikuita. Calling you. Amekuita. And calling you. Na kukuita tena. But you keep you keep telling him not today. Lakini wewe unaendelea na kumwambia sio leo. Because you still want to live your best life. Kwa sababu unapenda kuishi maisha yako. Because you still want to do the things of this world. Kwa sababu unataka kufanya mambo ya dunia hii. Because you still want to mix God and sin. Kwa sababu unataka kuchanga Mungu na zamu. Let me remind you. Lakini acha nikukumbushe. That if you don't respond today kama haujibu leo you are missing out wewe uko unakosa continue living your sinful ways endelee kuishi maisha yako ya dhambi but it's not going to end well lakini haita haina mwisho mzuri but today lakini siku ya leo whatever is he do not leave this place usitoke mahali hapo without tuning into the calling that god kama haujasogelea hiyo mabwito ambayo Mungu amekuita i can promise you that na kwa how big the calling may be aijalishi ukuu wa hiyo wito God will equip you. Mungu atakuwezesha. God will make sure. Mungu atafanya that that which is kama ile ayaliyo ndani yako comes out through you. I, 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 that even when you are asked to do tasks that are so beyond na hata ukifikia hiyo hiyo kazi ambayo unaona ni kubwa sana kwako. Tune into God. Wewe usogeze mbele ya Mungu. Ask the spirit that is inside. Na uombe huyo roho aliyo ndani yako to help you to do the calling. Kukusaidia kufanya yale ambayo Mungu amekuita kufanya. Kukusaidia wewe uishi kwenye shabaha za maisha yako. Amen. Amen. You need to stop this. I'm not good enough. Unaitwa una kuacha kusema mimi sistahili. I'm not qualified. Mimi sistahili. I'm not equipped. Mimi sistahili. I'm not the ma- I'm not the, the man or the woman for the task. Mimi sio mtu ambao unahitaji kwa kazi hii. He is God. Yeye ni Mungu. He is the God of the impossible. Yeye ni Mungu ambaye anafanya yale ambayo hayapatikani. So if he has called you into kama something, kama amekuita kufanya kitu, if he has called you into ministry, kama amekuita kwenye huduma, even though when you may feel ill equipped, hata ukijisikia hausa, the Lord is here to remind you. Mungu yuko hapa kukukumbusha. That he's going to equip you. Kama yeye atakufanya yale ambayo hayapatikani. But you need to humble yourself. Lakini unahitaji kujinyenyekeza. Unahitaji kujitoa mbele za Mungu. This the devil. Na kukana shetani. Na shetani atakukimbia. Wewe usichange Mungu na zangu. Do not miss God in living your best life. Usichange Mungu na kuishi maisha yako. Because anything that is a recipe for disaster. Kwa sababu yale ndio inatutuma kupotea. Humble yourselves. Ujinyenyekeze. Live in your calling. Wewe uishi maisha ya wito wako. Live in your purpose. Uishi maisha ya shabaha yako. There's nothing good in this world like God. Hakuna kitu ambayo yanashinda Mungu. I I rather look foolish for the Mimi Lord. Mimi na, napenda nifurahi sana hata nionekane ni mpumbavu kwa ajili ya Mungu. Then to look foolish for the for a human being. Ili akushinda uh, ku, ku, kufahamu mpumbavu juu ya mambo ya maisha. I say this in Swahili. Kulikuwa moja siku. Um there was a day I won't say the person but sasa mtu lakini alikuja kwangu akaniambia there's a person who came and told me eti Adija said Adija why won't you forget see ungaliki young ungaliki don't you see the way that you're still young you are youth you're still you're beautiful uko wakiana you're attractive uko wakiana 
But you're making yourself old. Is every day you're wearing head scar. There is no day I've seen you in a week. I literally just humbled myself. I said, sister. Even high heels. It's every day you're wearing sneakers It's every day head scar. You are, you are young, but you're making yourself I humbled old. myself. And I said, if only you know what God is doing for me. If only you know where God has taken me. I rather look foolish for the Lord than look foolish for human beings. I rather work in Tambala 24-7 than to waste my money on a $300 week. Amen. Amen. I don't know who I am speaking to. But if someone tells you that you're, you're making yourself old, that you, you're youth, just tell them, Mama, my brother, my sister, I don't want to be disrespectful. Mr. Kinkose Adabu, it's not me, like you know, Mungu. Like it's uh, equal me, but ask God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's read First Samuel, and that's gonna be. We're gonna wrap today's message. Amen. Tuta, Let's go into First Samuel 16. Tuta soma Samuel wa kwanza sura kumina sita. From six to thirteen. From starting wa sita mpaka kumina tatu. First Samuel 16. Samuel wa kwanza sura kumina sita. From six to thirteen. For those that have the word, Mstari if we can follow along, please. Tatu. Let us read. So we're reading First Samuel chapter six. Okay, chapter six. Chapter sixteen. Yeah. From four to thirteen. Yeah. The word says. When they came, he looked at Eli Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is, being, is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as a, as a man sees. Men look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Ab Abedabeth and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord seen this one. Then Jesse said, Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to, to Jesse, are, are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. But behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him. For we will not sit down until he, he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruby and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this, this is him. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David that day forward. And Samuel rose and went to Rahab. Amen. Amen. To save time, I think we'll just stay with the English. Amen. Amen. I'll just quickly summarize the story of David. He was anointed as a king amongst all his brothers. Samuel went to Jesse's house. Samuel amenda kwa nyumba ya Jesse. Because the Lord has sent him there to anoint the next king. Kwa sababu Mungu amemtuma hapo mtu king mfalme mafuta. And so when Samuel reached there, na wakati Samuel alifika hapo, he went through the first son. Ame ameonana na na kaka wa kwanza, the second son, wa pili, until the seventh son. Mpaka wa saba. And God said, "No, I have not called." Na Mungu alikuwa akiwakatala wote. And then there was a question said, is there one, is this all your sons? Now, and they said there was one more that's in the, you know, keeping the sheep. And they said, call him. And when he was called, he was immediately anointed. Samuel took the oil and anointed him Samuel as king. Amen. I believe that there is Samuels in this, I mean, there's David in this house. 
kwenye nyumba hii clap your hands i believe this david in this house that amongst your brothers and sisters amongst your friends god may be calling you like the way he calls david. god wants to anoint you and today god is reminding us that we need to obey. We need to humble ourselves Amen. Amen. I want to call up the intercession team na, and the worship just to give us one song so we wa, can pray wa, and just wrap up. Na worship team ni tupate kuomba. And then Papa Mwalimu will close. Na kisha Papa Mwalimu atatufungia maombi ya kufunga. The intercession team please. Karibu. And then just the worship wa, just for one song we'll pray it. Na worship team kwa nyimbo moja kisha tutaomba. Don't leave this place without coming to God and just say God I'm here use me. Ji nyenyekeze tu na kuambia Mungu Mungu niko hapa niko tayari nitumikishe. Surrender to him and he will equip you. Amen. Ujitoe kwake naye atakupatia ataku atakujalia. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes God. Who and I me? Stand so we can pray. God is not unable to do anything in your life. He qualifies the weak and gives them strength. And let that be your prayer for today. Tell God to qualify you. Tell God to touch you. He qualifies you in his own way. You are not worthy. You are not worthy. You are not worthy. You are not worthy. Lakini Bwana anajua na anakusudia siku ya leo. Hakutengeneze tena zaidi. Hakufikishe kwenye hatua nyingine. Ni kwako kujiombea na Bwana ambao yuko hapa. Atakuwezesha. Tuombe kwa pamoja. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Asante kwa neno hili lenye uzima la kutotia nguvu. Bwana sisi ambao tulio wazaifu amba tuweze lolote umetuambia e bwana we ni mungu wa wale walio wazaifu we ni mungu wa wale wasio uweza we ni mungu wa wale ambao wameshindwa ili upate kuwawezesha jina lako litukuzwe kwa ajili e bwana tuko hapa sisi walio wazaifu ambao chini ya jua hatukamiliki hatuwezi lolote lakini libarikiwe jina lako wewe unayesema tunayaweza mambo yote kupitia wewe ututia nguvu endelea kututia nguvu endelea kutuwezesha si rahisi e bwana katika safari kuna miba na michongoma kuna milima ya kila aina hatuwezi bila wewe hatuwezi bila wewe wezesha kila mmoja utuwezeshe e bwana asante kwa ajili ya huyu ambao umemtumia siku ya leo ambao ni chombo chako umemtia nguvu e bwana umemtoa kwenye matope na kumuinua juu baba asante wako wengi ambao wako chini hapa wanaotamani kuinuliwa na wewe wako wengi walio wazaifu hapa ambao wanahitaji kutiwa nguvu na wewe baba tunatangaza Matendo yako ya ajabu kwa chini ya kila mtu. Kwa chini la Yesu Kristo. Kwa chini la Yesu. Asante Mungu wa matendo ya ajabu. Ona itakuwa chini na kutupandisha juu. Asante Mungu wetu. Asante kwa uwa wako. Asante kwa matendo yako ya ajabu. Asante moja ndugu ni wewe Bwana. Kuna watu wenye uwezo endelee kutembea. Usikuache usiondoke wale hapa bali endelea kuwa pamoja nasi kwenye kila hatua ya maisha yetu. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Mda wetu unaisha. We run out of time. Lakini na mie niko na ushuhuda juu ya huyu dada. But I also have a testimony because of this girl. Kabla ajaanza ku preach. Before she started preaching. Nilisikia iko naomba. I heard her praying. You did well. Jua nini nasema vile? Why am I saying this? <laughs> she came to my office one day and told me this. 
alikosha kusudia kuacha kwaya she was ready to give up on choir job alimwambia aombe mkwaya because they told her to pray in choir <laughs> amen amen mpaka thursday until thursday ee ajana uh, last thursday aliambia timie sitaomba she said i'm not praying juu mie siwezaki kuomba because i'm unable to pray aliomba ya she prayed Wow. Bandugo tuwe tayari kutumiwa na Bwana. Let us be ready to be used by God. Anaambia ata preach lakini hawezi kuomba. She will, she will preach but she's unable Kipita to pray. Kipita alianza kuomba. And when she started praying. Mimi sikufunga macho. I didn't close my eyes. Nilikuwa nasikiliza vyenyeko na wewe. I was here I was listening to how she was praying. Nilizani labda haiko wewe. And I thought it wasn't her. But Bwana ambaye amekuchagua. But it's God who has called you. Tuwe tayari. Let us all be ready. Tulikuwa maombi moya Wednesday. We were in prayers on a Wednesday. Na wakati barazi ilituambia kwamba by youth at lead service. And uh, when the elders told us that the youth were leading service. Tulikuwa maombi tuko naomba kama We were kawaiti. in prayers just praying as routinely. Lakini kasikia voice inaniambia. But I heard a voice tell me. Abigail have word for the youth on that day. Abigail iko na neno kwa vijana kwa siku hiyo. Nilikuwa siamuonaga kwenye na ubiri. And I had yet to see her preach. Nikaanza doubt na spirit. And I started arguing with the spirit. Nikamwambia muombe ya Saturday. But I said in the Saturday uh, uh, prayers. Nisha mpanga more than 10 times anakataa. I've followed her more than 10 times and she's refused. Kisha Sunday service. So how is she going to deal with the Sunday service? Okay nitaona tu vinye vitakuwa. And I just said I'll see what will happen. Na nilimuita and I called her I told her the Lord has said that you will preach on Sunday I don't want your answer just go after two days, and after two days she came back and told me I'm still assessing myself. Mungu asifiwe. I praise God. Unaweza kaa chini. You may be seated. Mungu akubarikiza. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Sorry, naona saa maombi kingali. Sasa tulikuwa naomba pale nikasikia sauti na niambia kama kanisa mzima tushikane mkono juu ya connection ya ile mafuta. Ile neno haikuwa bure there is something which God wants to do in the church. I had a voice telling so, me to ask the whole church to pale kwenye muko kwenye mwekala tukamatane mikono wana napenda tujikonect na puissance moya burke tufanye kazi yake hapa australi jo ile nilisikia ndani yangu tukamatane mikono I don't know what we pray but nilisikia tao sauti na niambia kama kanisa yote muzima tungane kwa hii upako ya leo wana itransfere kwa kila mtu wote ambaye tunengio mundani basi nita muachia baba merci ya dirige priere mina toa tu this was just a voice that Mama Rahema received. Kama Bwana anasema tushikane mkono. If God has asked us to join hands together. Nikusema sie bote atuko mlevo moyo. It means we are not, we are all not on the same level. Lakini inawezekana. But it's possible. Nguvu iliyo ndani ya uiambukiewe. The power that is within someone. Tutaenda kumwombea Bwana atutie nguvu. We're going to ask for God to empower us. Hamini kwenye roho yako. Unayemshika aliye pembeni yako. Ni Mungu mzima. 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 Ukiangalia yule aliye pembeni yako, bali mwambie Bwana ninakushika wewe. Basi ninakushika wewe. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Nibarikiwe jina lako ewe Bwana. Kwa jina umekusudia. Sisi walio wadhaifu kututia nguvu. Sisi wasio uweza ukuwezesha. Tisama kaka huyu baba huyu, mama kijana mtoto. Hapo yuko mahali hapa. Tunaomba roho wako. Mungu mwenye nguvu ni wewe ewe Bwana. Achilia aliyo mapenzi yako. Achilia nguvu zako. Achilia uwezo wako. Achilia matendo yako ya ajabu yapate kutendeka. Kwa jina ya mtu huu Bwana unawatafuta. Wale wataka Mama, shamba ni kubwa Watenda kazi ni wachache Moto wako ewe wana Uteme na nietu Uwezo na mamdaki yako Ipate kutikirisha Kundia wakoti Wakutangaza bali jamba Ya ufalme wako Baba ate ijulikani Ya kwamba ufalme wako Umezima wa kwenye mtiu Ijulikani ya jamba Ufalme wako na tenda kazi Kwenye mtiu Na wame ya uwaote Hama wako mali hapa Watoka po hapa Wawana moto wako Wash your mouth, 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 w
Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Hallelujah. And quickly we're going to go through our announcements. Our first announcement, Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Especially we would like to thank our youth Kwa kazi yote meifanya, for their work today. Allowing God to use you. Unajua, you know, mungu na uko kijana, iko working God while you're young is not an easy thing to do. Lakini kwa ishima kubwa, but we owe you respect. We are proud of you. you. The youth are the strength of this church. May you keep unity. So we may do this uh, work of God in a very special way. Uh, God has spoken and there's a word within that. And you have the power to conquer the devil. We're also thankful to 